All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the log raised bed, the giant log raised bed that we built. Uh, well, it's been over a month now since we built it, filled it, and uh, it's time to get some things planted in there. So I've prepared the raised bed, and uh, basically what I did, I did throw some ash in there. I've got some hardwood ash for a wood stove. I sprinkled a little bit of that on top just to, just to take the edge a little bit off the acidity. And then I added a little bit, a very, very thin layer of peat moss um, just on the top of this. And before someone talks to me about using peat moss, sphagnum peat moss is an excellent resource for the garden. Every time I use this stuff, someone emails me and says, it's not sustainable and it kills the environment uh, and all these things. No matter what your thoughts are on peat moss, it is an excellent resource for the garden. It holds moisture very, very well and it's excellent for starting seeds. And so I'm gonna be using this as we start seeds in the bed and uh, just put a real thin layer of it down here. You can see it's just kind of sparse and spread out. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is uh, plant my seeds and then I'll sprinkle a fine layer of peat on top of that. And the seeds will stay nice and wet around uh, the peat moss will surround the seeds and keep them nice and wet as they germinate. And then they'll poke right through into our rich compost soil um, and, uh, and grow real nice that way. So I always use peat moss in our garden. And I don't know about other places, but up here in Michigan, it's a great resource. Cocoa core is way too expensive. So we're in the greenhouse here, actually the hoop house or the high tunnel, and it's not heated. I'm not using the, the forced air heater. It just wasn't keeping up, and so I was just wasting wood. So I have that, uh, the fan turned off on it, and I just am cycling the hot water from the wood boiler at 170 degrees, 160, 170 degrees, through all the, the 100 foot of PEX tubing in this bed. Um, it's buried about a foot down, and it has a bed of straw underneath it, and then it has our thick composted soil, uh, compost soil mix on top of it. And it has been keeping it very warm. I think I'm going to have no problem germinating seeds in here, and I think if I build a hoop, a little hoop house kind of thing, right over the top of this, cover it with plastic, that I'll be able to keep this warm, probably just with the warmth of the soil. But I'll also have the forced air heater to run right down that little tunnel and keep, help to keep that warm as well. I've got a thermostat we'll use for that. And let's check the soil temperatures. So this is a dual probe thermometer. I've used this uh, quite a few times in the past. And uh, what a handy tool to have. There's, uh, it's not expensive, actually. I'll put a link to this on Amazon, of course, as always. But it has these, uh, these two leads. One of them I have buried about maybe eight inches down in the soil. And then the other one I just kind of have sitting up here at the surface and this is the one that's buried it's 89.2 degrees fahrenheit and i just sprayed it down with some very cold water to soak the soil so uh but it's been holding right around between 87 and 90 degrees and it has been uh so it's nice and warm under the soil here um, the surface of the soil is really not that warm it, it seems to dissipate off pretty easily um, so we can see the temperature of the surface of the, of the uh, soil here is 55 degrees, and that's pretty much the air temperature in uh, in this uh, greenhouse right now. So at 90 degrees, the soil underneath here, I think we're going to have no problem germinating, keeping it warm in here. And I bet you if I dug down even further, it's probably even hotter in there. I bet you we were 120 degrees down a little bit further than that soil. Let's get started and get some things planted. I've got some things to show you with how we're going to be planting this today. It's pretty cool. All right, we're, we're gonna get to this in a minute. If you haven't seen this, pretty cool. Today, we are gonna be planting everything in this bed out of the MI Gardener Homestead Collection. So this is an awesome way to get started with your garden this year. If you don't have time to go through and pick everything out and figure out what you want and do all that shopping, order this homestead collection. It basically comes with everything we need to get an entire kitchen garden started. It has all the basics, all the necessities, um, all the good stuff that most people get anyway. Uh, these are special packages. They have twice as much seed in them. And so we'll get, uh, get, get more bang for your buck out of these guys. And uh, of course, if you use the link in the description, as always with MI Gardener stuff, you get a 10% discount, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go through a few of these. I'm not going to plant onions in here i don't think definitely going to plant some radishes let's see what we're going to plant in here i don't think i'm going to do onions in this bed definitely want to do some radishes these grow nice and quick and uh great for breaking up the soil a little bit uh these are got more of a pole bean i think they're a little taller cabbage might be an interesting thing to grow in here a few heads of cabbage be able to keep the bugs out try that beets not a huge eater of beets but uh well, let's try a few of those in here as well 
tomatoes. Here's the tomatoes that I want to be able to grow in this thing. So let's see if we can grow some of those. Definitely want a lot of root crops and cold weather stuff. Carrots are great. Cucumbers a little too big for in here. Corn's too tall for in here. Here's a bush bean. We can grow that in here. California wonder peppers, one of my favorite things to grow. And I think this is definitely a go in here. Lettuce, great cool weather crop, and some Roma tomatoes. We'll get a good mix in here. So that'll get us started. I've got a bunch more seeds inside. We'll probably grab some uh, other kinds of leafy greens and spinaches and other things like that that will pop in here as well. All right, so what is this little tool? Well, this is something that I actually made uh, back at the Suburban Homestead. This is a square foot garden template. And uh, there are other versions of this out there. You can make it very simply out of cardboard or something like that. But this is one that's made out of wood. It's actually made out of an old piece of picnic table that we uh, had scrapped. Uh, this one is designed specifically to plant in our pallet raised bed design. And the pallet raised beds have these supports in the corners. And so you can flip up these little pieces so you can fit that right into the corner. And that support kind of goes right here. But the, what this does is uh, it's a square foot garden template, so it allows you to, to do a really compact um, grid planting style. It allows you to, uh, well, it does a lot of things for you. It tells you exactly where your plants are planted. It makes it a lot easier to weed, especially things like carrots that look a lot like grass and other things when they grow up. Um, it allows you to get your spacing just right and close enough where you don't have to do a lot of seed thinning and things like that. You can pretty much you know, use very little seed to get this planted out so you can serve, conserve a lot that way. So this is actually designed for square foot gardening. And if you're not familiar with that, check it out online. There's all kinds of different resources out there. Um, but we use this method with gardening no matter what we do, but especially in our raised beds. And it allows a very compact style of grid planting. Um, and this allows you to plant things with exactly enough room to grow. Not too much, not too little. There's, uh, it conserves a lot of seed because you're not just spread a bunch of seed out there and then thinning things out to get your spacing. Um, it allows you to really plant things in a, in a kind of methodical way. So the different colors represent the uh, different planting grids. And so the red ones here, there's 16 of those. And so that gives you a 16 grid. That's for stuff like carrots. Uh, that gives a perfect amount of space for carrots to grow up and uh, not be too crowded and you really don't have to thin them out. Uh, and so we just drop our seeds right in the uh, red holes where we're planting our carrots. I made this little push stick, just a dowel on it that fits right in there. And so what I usually do is I just come through, make little divots in the soil first. And then we'll sprinkle our carrot seed into the holes and we'll just leave it. And then we'll come back afterwards and I'll just sprinkle a little bit of peat moss um, over the top of it to, to cover those seeds. The other grids in here for all different kinds of things. You, you can actually look it up online, square foot garden uh, seed spacing, and you'll see a bunch of pictures and, and charts and all kinds of stuff. The white ones here, there's four of them. That would be for stuff like onions or maybe bush beans or something like that. Uh, the purple ones, there's eight. And so that gives you a grid for different types of vegetables. The big one in the middle, that's for your big stuff like tomatoes or peppers, just one per square foot. And man, this thing works really, really well. It's just a great way to plant save seed, save space, and everything is nice and lined up in your garden. It looks nice, it grows nice, it has a perfect amount of space. Uh, and uh, so I really love this thing. Now this garden isn't exactly square because the logs are different sizes and, and, and curves and things like that, but we're gonna do as best we can to run a, a square foot kind of style right along the edge of this and you know uh, the width of it as well. To kind of strategize uh, what we're gonna plant where and then we'll get started getting this stuff planted. Down at this end is where the heater is, and when this heater kicks on, I'm assuming it's going to really heat up this side of the bed the most. And the thermostat's going to be down here at the coldest end of the bed, so this this uh, side will naturally be warmer just because the heater's right here. It, there's some residual heat from that anyway. So when this end of the bed gets down to temperature and kicks that heater on, this end is probably going to be cooler. Um, it may drop down to 35 degrees at this end of the bed, where at the other end it's probably going to stay above 40 or 50. So I'm going to plant all of our coolest crops down at this end. So carrots and lettuces and um, all the leafy greens and radishes and all that kind of stuff is going to go down there. Down at this end, closest to the heater, we'll plant all of our tomatoes and peppers and potatoes and uh, whatever else I can come up with to plant here.
I broke my stick. The other way to, to do this depends on the seeds that you're using in it. Uh, these radish seeds I'm just putting, trying to get just two in each hole. As you can see, it really conserve a lot of seed compared to just sprinkling them in a row. But the other thing you can do with the push stick, unfortunately, of course, mine broke, but you can put the seeds in first. Since these radish and, and carrots and lettuce, they don't, you don't need to plant them very deep at all. I mean, a quarter inch, you really need to get them covered with soil, keep them wet. My, my push stick used to have color codes on it for different depths. I had a quarter inch, a uh, half inch, three quarter, one inch yeah, for different things. So I could push it through the hole to the certain depth and that would, you know, put my seed right where it needed to be. But the one thing you do is put the seeds in here first and then just push them down just a little bit. And that just, just to push them into the soil, just to keep them in place. I don't need to really get them very deep. We're just going to sprinkle that peat moss over the top of them keep that water around these seeds and they'll germinate nice and quick. Just looking around in the raised bed, there's a lot of grass already starting to grow and I saw some grass growing in other places. So that tells me that, uh, you know, for my leafy greens and even carrots and radishes and cold weather stuff, um, I really don't even need much heat in here. It'll probably grow without it. But uh, with the real cold temperatures coming up, I, I don't want to take any any risks, but we'll get this stuff planted first, the cold weather stuff. We'll plant the hot weather stuff as soon as we get our hoops put up. Man, is this a handy tool to have. I love this little uh, this little template. Um, I just love how things turn out when, when you plant this way. Having the spacing and, and having things really be able to grow to their potential. You don't have things you know, too squished together. You don't have things too spread apart. And man, does it conserve seed when you plant this way. Um, I probably could have planted a little heavier with the carrots and the radishes. I probably could have planted 32 per square square foot, but uh, 16 will give them good space and, and they the the greens really get to get a lot of light that way. They get to spread out a little bit. So the, the carrots I found tend to grow bigger and deeper and longer um, the, the more light and, and the more green that they have on them. So uh, that should be, this should be just fine. I've got a lot more planting to do. I won't uh, bore you with watching me put seeds in the ground. Uh, so I'll get the rest of this planted out. In the next video, we're gonna be building the hoops and covering it with a greenhouse plastic. Now I bought a greenhouse plastic right off of Amazon. Actually, I found the best deal that way um, on a small piece of plastic. It's a 25 foot by I think a 12 foot uh, uh, piece. And I'm gonna be using this electrical conduit, same stuff I used to build the greenhouse itself. This is a three quarter inch conduit. It is uh, UV resistant, so it you know it won't break down in the sun as quickly as a regular PVC pipe would. And it's pretty flexible. So we'll get some clamps put on here. We'll make our hoops. Uh, we'll stretch our plastic over, which shouldn't take too long. And then we'll rig up our heater and all that good stuff in the next video. I've got some potatoes that I've, we saved from last year's harvest, actually, uh, that, are, that are now sprouting in the basement. And so uh, we didn't get to all of them. So I'm going to bring those out here and try to plant those in the, the hot side of the, the bed, the, the side closest to the heater. But I don't want to plant any of the peppers or tomatoes or any of the hot weather stuff uh, until I actually get the heater running and the hoops are done because those seeds won't even germinate in the cool weather anyway. This stuff here may germinate without uh, without the hoops, actually. We'll see what happens, but let's check our temperature really quick. We're still at we're still at 90 degrees down there in the soil, so uh, I think this thing's working great. Once I got this raised bed wet, 
and the soil you can see the soil level dropped about maybe four or five even six inches for real words remember it was heaped up in the middle it was real high here and level this all out i packed it down a little bit and, and soaked it every couple days i came in here and just soaked this thing and that water and everything once that got compressed around those tubes it really started transferring the heat through the soil and now this whole thing is warm uh, you know just under the surface in fact you know a lot of times if i come in here when it's colder in the greenhouse i'll scrape some soil aside and you can just see the steam coming out of it so it's nice and warm in here and uh, i really think this is going to work so um, hopefully we won't even have to run that forced air very often here to keep this warm but only time will tell we, we have never i've never never rigged up something like this to and uh, so we'll see some things may grow better than others there's going to be a learning curve thanks for hanging with me guys thumbs up on the video sorry some of these things get stretched out so far i really try as hard as i can to get these videos out to you guys i appreciate your patience guys subscribe if this is your first time to the channel let me know what you guys think in the comment section and as always guys thanks for watching have a good one